Hey everyone, it's Sakar, and today we're going to be going over my Arcanist build that I've been using lately for the Gold Road chapter. Uh, real quick before I start guys, I just want to ask you guys if you guys could subscribe to my Battlegrounds channel, if you guys like daily content or Battlegrounds, I would really appreciate it if you guys can go and subscribe to that. The link to that will be in the description, but I'm not going to talk your guys ear off. Let's get on with the build. So we're going to be an orc on our Arcanist. I think that orc is best in slot because you get a little bit of max health as well as some extra weapon and spell damage. And honestly, that's just huge for your overall damage. And it just makes it so that you're just sitting at like 5.5k weapon damage flat at all times. And I just think that it makes it really strong and really hard hitting. Moving on, we're also using 57 points into health for our attributes and 7 points into stamina to give us a max magic pool of 15.3k, a max health pool of 37.7k, and a max stam pool of 17.2k. We're also using we're also a vampire stage 3 to get that undeath passive. We're also using Orzoga Smoke to Bear Haunch for our food. That's going to increase our max health and give us stem and magic recovery as well to help our overall sustain. And then I'm using the Lover Mundus to increase our overall penetration. As you can see, we've got 10.9k penetration at all times. That's just flat. So I think that's a lot of damage. We also have sources of major and minor reach on this build. So I think that it's a lot of damage. So moving on, let's go to our gear. We're going to be using Gerald's as our monster set. We're going to be using medium impen helmet and well-fitted medium shoulders. Gerald is going to be really interesting. What it does is it gives you a line of weapon spell damage. And then the two piece is going to be dealing damage. You're going to apply a stack of Milady to your enemy, reducing healing received by 1% for five seconds up to 35 stacks max. You can apply a stack every 0.5 seconds, which is pretty often. Then also, that's going to be debuffing you as well, up to 15% as well. So again, that's not cool for you, but honestly, you don't really feel it on this build because Arcanus deals a lot with shields and not really much healing in general. I mean, it does do healing, obviously, but it's more concerned with shields instead. So it doesn't really affect you as much. So it's really nice for debuffing your enemies. This build is going to be kind of toxic when it comes to debuffing your enemies. And also, I've got Kind March's Cruelty on my front bar. This is going to be a heavy reinforced chest piece as well that we're running. Kind Marchers is going to give you a line of max health, stem recovery, armor, and then when you deal direct damage, you're going to apply one of five random major debuffs to your enemies within eight meters of you for 18 seconds, and that effect can occur once every eight seconds, so it can kind of stack a little bit too. So those major buffs that you can provide are Major Breach, which, I mean, we already have a source of that, so that's just doubling up. Major Cowardice, Major Defile, Major Maim, and Major Vulnerability. So that's a lot of damage when you could time that properly. Between the Geral's lack of healing and Kai Marcher's, uh, you're just applying major buffs to your enemy. That's actually kind of massive, and I love it. And then we're also using Heavy Kai Marcher's Hands in Impen as well. And then I'm using a Light Sash of the Trainee. We have an extra slot in this build, so this is going to, uh, it's also going to be an impen. This is going to give you a little bit of extra max health, just to really make your character a lot more beefy. And then also we've got Kai March's Cruelty on our legs, heavy reinforced. And then our back bar set, it's going to be Wretched Vitality. I just wanted some extra recovery on this build, and Wretched Vitality is really good for this. Uh, your abilities are very expensive on Arcanist, so that's why we're doing this. So, Wretched Vitality is going to be giving you a line of magic recovery, stem recovery, a weapon and spell damage, and while in combat, applying a major buff or debuff to a target is going to grant you 260 magic recovery and stem recovery for 15 seconds. The same thing with a minor buff or debuff, it's going to give you 130 magic stem recovery for 15 seconds. So basically, Spoiler alert, guys. I'm just going to go to my skills real quick. Uh, if you apply Race Against Time, it's going to give you Major Expedition and Minor Force. So that's a major buff and that's a minor buff. It, apply, it procs both conditions of Wretched Vitality. Boom. That's a bunch of extra recovery right there. So like I said, medium well-fitted boots for that. We're also using the same rings. We're going to be using Ring of Wretched Vitality on both rings. Both are going to be infused with Weapon and Spell Damage enchantments on it. And then also we've got Saint the Seducer because in my opinion, Saint the Seducer is the best mythic in the game right now. I don't even think it's close. I think that this is without a doubt the best. So it's going to be infused with a weapon and spell damage enchantment on it. So what it does for all of you guys that don't know, while in combat, you're going to gain one of five random major buffs, which changes every 10 seconds. Enemies within 12 meters of you are going to gain one of five random minor debuffs, depending on which buff you have available. And so the available buffs and debuffs are going to be when you have major berserk, your enemies are going to have minor maim. 
When you have Major Resolve, your enemy is going to Minor Breach. When you have Major Force, Minor Brittle. Major Evasion, Minor Vulnerability. Major Courage, Minor Cowardice. So as you can see, this is going to stack really well with Kind Marchers because this applies minor debuffs to your enemies while Kind Marchers applies major debuffs to your enemies. So you can basically stack the two of them and you are hitting so unbelievably hard when you time that right. It is so awesome. And in my opinion, this is the best Mythic in the game right now bar none. So moving on, we're also going to be using Kind Marcher's Maces on our front bar. We're going to be using a main hand is going to be Nernhone with a shock damage enchantment on it, and our offhand is going to be sharpened with a poison damage enchantment on it. And then we're going to be using Ice Staff of Retro Vitality as our back bar, defending with an increased weapon and spell damage enchantment on it. So looking at our champion points, our blue slotables are going to be Force of Nature. Wrathful Strikes, Deadly Aim, and Untamed Aggression. Our red slotables are going to be Celerity, Sustained by Suffering, Survival Instincts, and Pain's Refuge. As you can see with my blue CP, I'm tired of being defensive. I just want to do damage. It's quadruple offensive, and I don't care anymore. <laughs> Anyways, we're also doing, uh, for our green tree, what we really care about is Breakfall, Rationer, and Liquid Efficiency. So let's move on to our skills now. Our main spammable is going to be Rending Slashes. I wasn't sure whether to do this or the uh, Blood for Blood. What's the name of the uh, Arterial Burst? Arterial Burst. The uh, the Vam spammable. But in the end, I decided to go with Rending Slashes because I felt like that dot is going to apply Geralds more often, especially when you're like being defensive and like putting up your buffs. I feel like you'll still be able to proc Geral that way. So I want to do Rending, and overall, I think it's really nice because it's also going to be applying uh, Hemorrhaging, which is another status effect to apply to your uh, Force of Nature CP as well. And then we also have Camo Hunter, which is going to be your source of Major Savagery and Prophecy, so that's going to increase your weapon at Spell Critical by 2,600. Also, you're going to be getting Minor Berserk for 5 seconds after dealing critical damage from the enemy's flank. Also, we have Recuperative Treatise. This is going to, I'm just going to read these because I still don't, <laughs> I know what they do, but it's just, I don't know the words too well. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's a great way to say that. Anyways, uh, so Recuperative Treatise is basically going to be your source of major brutality and sorcery. So it's going to increase your weapon and spell damage by 20%. And then also every five seconds, you're going to be dealing an additional 4,300 magic damage. And you're also going to be restoring 600 magic and stamina to you as well. And then we have Celiarch's Flail. This is going to be kind of a sort of burst damage to combo. So this is going to do 6,900 physical damage and healing yourself for 4,100 of that damage. Also, enemies are going to be immobilized, so it's kind of key to keep them stuck in place. So it's kind of huge for you to just kind of, you know, weave your other abilities in there as they're stuck. Also, uh, deals up to 100% more damage to enemies that are less than 50% health. So it's kind of an execute in a way. It's not really the best, but it does work as an execute. Also, you deal an additional 5% increased damage to your enemies that are going to be hit with this ability because you're going to be applying Abyssal uh, Ink to them, which lasts for 20 seconds after you apply this. So look, 5% extra damage. I'll take where I can get it. Huge. Also, we've got Crux Weaver's Armor. This is going to be your source of major resolve, so it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 6k. Also, you're going to be, uh, while this armor persists, taking damage is going to apply minor breach to your enemy, so it's going to reduce the enemy of uh, their armor by 3k for 6 seconds, so it reduces their armor. I'll take that as well. Also, we've got Dawnbreaker because Dawnbreaker is the most versatile ultimate in the game. Uh, you can put this on any class, and it basically works. Uh, it's going to be your source of burst damage, and I just definitely recommend using Dawnbreaker on this build. I really wouldn't use anything else on your front bar. I just think Dawnbreaker is kind of your best way to get that burst potential out there. All right, finally, we're on to our back bar. We've got Impervious Rune Ward, which is going to basically be your shield and your main heal on this build. So, uh, like the Rune Knights of old, summon a shield that absorbs 12,800 damage for one second. And then uh, 6,400 damage for five seconds after that. Uh, so basically, also after that, uh, consuming a crux is going to heal you for 4,600 health. And, you know, if you have three cruxes, that's like a 12 or 13k tooltip. That's massive. Basically, it's giving you a shield and a heal, which is a mechanic that I'm not a big fan of in both Arcanist and uh, Sorcerer. But I'll leave my opinions to other types of videos. 
Anyways, we've got a race against time, which is going to be a lot of different abilities in one. It's going to be your source of major expedition, so it's going to increase your movement speed by 30%. It's going to give you minor force, so it's going to increase your critical damage done by 10%. Also, activating this ability is going to remove all snares and immobilization to you for 4 seconds and grant you immunity to them. So when you're stuck in place, hit this ability, boom, you're fast, get out of there. Also, we've got Rune Guard of Freedom. I like this more better personally. It's going to give you minor resolve for 20 seconds, so it's going to increase your physical and spell resistance by 3k. Also, you're going to get minor protection, so it's going to uh, reduce your damage taken by 5%. Also. The first time you are damaged while below 50% health, minor protection will be consumed and that will be giving you 13,800 heal, that's going to scale off your max health, and you gain 3,000 armor and crown control immunity for 6 seconds. So that is huge, that's a great heal and that's really going to help you get out of those sticky situations where you're taking damage at low health. Boom, that's going to help you get right back up to full health. It's awesome. I say boom a lot. I don't know why. Anyways, we're going to be using Evolving Room Mend as well. This is going to be kind of your pseudo resolving vigor in a way. It's going to be a way to kind of combo your healing in between your other two healing abilities. And it's just a really good way to just kind of help you just get right back up to full health pretty quickly while comboing all those abilities. Also, we've got Ellie's Susceptibility, because every build has Ellie's Susceptibility. It's going to be a source of Major Breach, so it's going to reduce your enemy's physical and spell resistance by 6k. Also, every 7.5 seconds, the enemy is going to be afflicted with the Burning Chilled and Concussion status effect, so it's a lot of extra damage. Those status effects do a lot of damage, and on top of that, you're also applying more status effects to use for your Force of Nature CP. Definitely use that. And then also we've got Sanctum, Sanctum of the Abyssal Sea, which is in my opinion one of the best ultimates in the game because people like to zerg you down. So basically what this does is it puts a shield around you and that shield will absorb 60% of all incoming damage for 10 seconds up to a maximum of 48,895 damage. So it's going to be scaled off for max health. And then when the shield collapses, you lash out dealing all of the damage you absorbed as magic damage to enemies within 5 meters over 10 seconds. So that same damage that you are soaking up you then put out to other people, and for some reason, it's been over a year since Arcanus has been out, and people still haven't learned how this ability works, and I am just still rolling people so much with this ability. I love it so much, and I definitely recommend trying it out. All right, so that is the entire build. I really hope that you guys enjoyed. I really like this build a lot, and I hope that you guys too, too. Uh, a few last announcements. If you're not subscribed to this channel, I would really appreciate if you guys did so. We're kind of slowly creeping our way up to 10K uh, subs, and I just appreciate you guys being here. Also, liking the video helps me out too. Uh, we also have that BG channel that I mentioned earlier. That link will be in the description. I post on there daily. So if you guys want to go over, subscribe to that. That would mean the absolute world to me. We're very close to hitting 900. And it just really helps me out in a very free way from you guys. So thank you so much for being there. Uh, one last thing as well. If you guys like variety content as well. I've got a third YouTube. I'm managing all three YouTubes. It's a lot of work, but we've got a third YouTube where I'm doing variety content. Currently, we're doing a Bioshock playthrough, which I'm really enjoying. So if you guys like to see me play other games besides just ESO, the link to that will be in the description as well. So guys, I'm not going to talk your guys' ear off any further. I've talked so much already. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and I will see you guys on the next one. Later.